lost everyone there. Um, when the pupils of Irvine Royal Academy heard in 1982 that Strathclyde Education Committee had recommended that their school be closed in June 1984, the school captains called a meeting. Um, what we want you to do this afternoon is sort of play about with ideas. Um, you being members of the Interhouse Committee, we want you to go back with ideas to your, to your year groups of how the pupils can be involved in some sort of campaign which is obviously going to be mounted against the proposals. So, any ideas? What about a pupils' petition for all the pupils in the school to sign? Write that down. Any ideas? You could get a petition for outsiders. For the people of the town, you mean? Yes. Ah, I think that's a must. We'll need some support from Cowinning. Yeah, that's right. Cowinning Academy will be affected as well, so we'll have to make the people of Cowinning aware of what the situation is. That's right. Not just the local community, but as many people as possible. In fact, there's a meeting across the road at the Grange Hotel of the teachers' union on Wednesday night. We could perhaps arrange some sort of protest with banners and that sort of thing to show them our opinion. Uh -huh. What is the union's position just now? At the moment, I think they're fairly neutral, but we could sway them if we showed them just how we felt. Right, well, we can do that. I'm sure plenty of volunteers here want to come out, mm -hmm. some sort of demonstration. We can go onto the art department for that and get some banners and things over. On the subject of demonstrations, the full education committee actually falls during our October holiday, so it might be an idea to take a busload of pupils up, could demonstrate outside and even hand over the petitions that we'll have collected when they look for. A bus, that would cost some money, which is mm -hmm. another problem. We can't go on and do all these things if we haven't got some sort of funds. I think it would be quite a good idea to have some sort of public meeting and we could get David Lambie, the local MP, to chair the meeting for us. Quite a good idea. We'd need to get a good turnout at that, we really yeah. would. Well, if David Lambie's speaking, you probably will get a good turnout because he's quite popular around he's here. He's a prominent local figure. I think it'd be a good idea if we could have a protest march down the town and have pupils and everything. Mm -hmm. We could also have, say, the public and ex pupils uh -huh. as well. Mm -hmm. We could get banners and things for that as well. Yeah, that'd be good. What were you saying, Arsene? What about lapel badges? We could have these printed and hand them out to the public. And the rector come up with a good idea, please, sir. And the initials SI are standing for Save Irvine Royal. Work on the campaign started immediately. Banners, leaflets and posters were produced after school hours. Pupils spent weekends and holidays gathering 10,000 signatures on a petition to save the school and on fundraising activities of various kinds. Demonstrations were arranged in Irvine and Glasgow in a successful effort to attract publicity in the press and on radio and television. Links were established with the local parents' action committee. All this activity was intended to influence the people who had to take this difficult decision, the members of Strathclyde Region's Education Committee, and in particular its chairman, Dr Malcolm Green. He summed up for us the reasons why the committee had recommended that Irvine Royal be closed. In Irvine, um, we find that uh, there are several hundred places which are not being utilised and it costs about a quarter of a million a year to keep a secondary school going in property costs alone and it's therefore reasonable to raise the question whether that is a justified use of public money and whether that money can and ought to be spent elsewhere. Irvine New Town was born in the optimistic 60s and its planners hoped for a population of 120,000 by 1985. But today, in 1983, it has less than half that number. Among the new town's building priorities were schools, and the first new secondary was Ravens Park Academy, just along the road from Irvine Royal. It has 900 pupils today, but space for another 500. In 1972, Greenwood Academy was opened on one of the new town's housing estates. It has 1,300 pupils today and room for 500 more. Six years ago came Kilwinning Academy, which could take about 300 extra pupils on top of its present 1,300. The unused space at these new schools was one of the main reasons for the proposal to close Irvine Royal, according to the divisional education officer. In the Irvine area, due to falling rolls, which of course is not uh, unique in Irvine, it's uh, affecting the whole of the region, indeed the whole of Scotland. Uh, the falling rolls uh, have shown that in Irvine we can in fact accommodate comfortably in uh, the other secondary schools all the pupils without using the old accommodation at Irvine Royal. 
The accommodation provided for Irvin Royal's 800 pupils was certainly old. The main building dates from the beginning of the century, and its lack of up-to-date facilities, like this large, well-equipped games hall at Greenwood Academy, made the case for closure stronger. Greenwood also has, like Ravens Park and Kilwinning Academies, large dining halls with modern kitchens, providing a choice of high-quality meals that must be the envy of less fortunate schools elsewhere. But a crucial element in the Education Committee's thinking was the cost of keeping Irvine Royal open. To retain a school which is no longer required in terms of places means a decision to spend money which is in a way not there. It's going to be additional. For example, if in the whole of Strathclyde region a number of secondary schools, perhaps of the order of 20 or so, are not closed within the next few years, then the added burden on the ratepayer will be something like £29 million. When the plan first came out, Matt Brown, a former provost of Irvine, was chairman of the Save Our School Committee formed by parents of pupils attending Irvine Royal. He succeeded in gaining support from all sections of the local community by the clear presentation of what he felt was a very reasonable case against closure. Irvine has cooperated with the region on school closures, where there have been clear evidence of declining school roles. The schools council have approved closures. This time, what's happening unusually, the region intend closing a secondary school with a large and stable school role. This school role hasn't altered in any way in a decade, and in fact looks set to go on in the same way if left alone. The remaining three schools in Irvine are working at about 80% of their planned capacity, because they were planned as very large units, and they're working very efficiently. We feel that if all the children are lumped together in three schools, which go instantly to capacity, parental choice is removed, uh, vocational training is removed. From the school building itself, Irvin Royal's message was clearly transmitted to passers-by. And the school was keen to show us that even in the huts that line the playground, one of the main reasons put forward for closure, a subject like biology could be taught in the same way as in more modern classrooms elsewhere. And now we're going to do the listen and repeat. Les enfants sont contents. Les enfants sont contents. Les enfants sont contents. Les marceaux ont des vêtements neufs pour This language laboratory is in the old building and is only one example of how the school has been able to keep up with the times. But, as many of those campaigning to save it were prepared to admit, the school lacks many things taken for granted elsewhere. And it does have one big disadvantage. It has to use two buildings. An annex built in 1931 is linked to the main school by a bridge open to the elements. But Matt Brown, while admitting some of the disadvantages, stuck to his basic argument. Certainly, we would like a new school, but we're aware that it's not utopia and resources are scarce. This school offers exactly the same uh, subjects and combinations of options as the other three schools. Uh, and the question to be asked is this, why is it when something's functioning well and enjoys total support from the staff in that school and the support, incidentally, of the staffs in all the other urban schools and parental support, why must it be upset? Whose education system is it? Is it the people's system? Or is it the technical managers in the region who just equate pupils to units and units to numbers and numbers to spaces? Education is more than that. Education is an ongoing relationship. It's a sense of continuity, which they are constantly making upheavals. And in terms of scarce resources, I would point out that the intended school populations in Irvine will be on average 40% higher than the intended school population for the whole of Strathclyde. Why must the children of my town suffer? Why must we be different? 
Eric Potts, the chairman of the pupils' campaign, soon learned how to put the same the case in TV buildings. interviews. Or build us a new school. We just want four schools in Irvine. We feel it's necessary that we have four secondary non-denominational secondary schools in the Newtown area. Eric, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, all the best. Thank you very thanks. much. Cheers. A meeting in which parents of pupils attending Irvine Royal were consulted was held early in January 1983. The campaign to save the school had gained much momentum by this time, and 370 people turned up for what was, at times, a lively exchange of views. Among those on the platform ready to answer questions from the audience were two divisional education officers. The first speaker from the floor to win the enthusiastic approval of the audience was a local minister, James Gregg. Democracy is being endangered by this. One of the accusations that has been made time and again by officials and by some of the politicians is that there is widespread apathy over this matter. Could I make the point that the apathy is consistently being created by our politicians and our bureaucrats because people get to the point where they believe that there is nothing we can do, that this thing is all sewn up already. And I want it to be absolutely clear to everyone who has any authority with regard to education in this vicinity that that's not good enough. One of the key questions raised was whether the other three schools would be able to absorb the extra pupils from Irvine Royal. How's 400 odd children? Are the education authority willing to put their jobs in the line if the schools are not capable of holding these children that they be sacked? Now, are they willing to do that? Because I would get sacked at my work if I couldn't carry out the threat that I've got to do. Are the latest projections in terms of the roles of the schools as they exist at the present time, plus housing projected for the Irvine area and the figures of the capacity of school are worked out in accordance with the regulations of the Scottish Education Department. So they are in fact correct from that point of view and Mr Piper has been told that at least three or four times. The question was Mr Wall, <coughs> would you accept the sack if you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. there's, no, there's no question because we're not wrong. <laughs> For many of the parents in the audience, perhaps the most important question that was discussed at the meeting was whether it was desirable or not for Irvine New Town to have really large schools. We talk figures, we talk 1600s and 1500s. We don't talk community. And this is what we are concerned about in this school. My personal viewpoint is that if there were 300 kids at this school, fine. Because it's a community, it's a school which works. And I see the relationship which exists between the pupils and the teachers, and it's marvellous. And I don't see that at Ravens Park, because I attend evening classes at Ravens Park. Going into Ravens Park must be a wee bit like clocking into General Motors. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Ravens... <laughs> you know, and, and uh, Greenwood much the same. I don't want my kid processed through an educational sausage factory by faceless teachers and bust by irate bus conductors who want to see the back of the wee devils as soon as they can. A less controversial statement of the case for smaller schools was made by the Reverend James Gregg. This closure, this proposed closure, cannot be supported on moral, political, economic or educational grounds especially not on educational grounds. There is not a responsible educationalist anywhere in the length and breadth of the land that will, given the choice, support the idea of a school with over a thousand pupils. If there is any choice in the matter, small is beautiful. Yeah. Thursday, 24th of February was the day of decision. And as members of the Education Committee arrived at Strathclyde Region's headquarters in Glasgow, they were met by a pupils' demonstration.
I personally find noisy demonstrations rather irritating, and uh, I think if I were to try to be honest about my reaction, uh, I tend to be put off by uh, a rather uh, sort of brusque uh, demonstration uh, than, than, than have my sympathies engaged by it. So I tend to react on the basis of the arguments, and I, I hope that that's what I've done in this case. I think I can fairly say uh, that I have not been influenced by the numbers of people who've been demonstrating, the numbers of publications that have been produced, or the numbers of letters that I've received. These are not without their effect, of course, because in a sense they, they indicate people's concern, and people's concern must be important to us as democratic politicians. But by themselves, they couldn't influence the decision in default of strong arguments. One of the speakers opposing the school closure in the debate was Irvin's regional councillor, Elliot Gray who argued that the town might increase in population. It is a rather unique uh, situation that presently exists in Irvine uh, with regard to its status as a, as a new town. It is, of course, a, a growth centre, and with recent announcements regarding very considerable job prospects with others, I believe, in the pipeline, I think it would be wrong of us to be considering a reduction in educational facilities, especially when there is always the very real probability of further developments. But it is a relevant factor to be born in. After a careful analysis of the case for and against closure, Dr. Malcolm Green announced that he had changed his mind. I have decided not to put before you the recommendation contained in your papers. Instead, I propose the following, that no decision be taken to close Irvine Royal Academy, but that the rural projections be kept under review and if the anticipated pupil population falls to 3,500 or below, which it may well do, the director be authorized to bring forward proposals for rationalization of secondary school accommodation at a future date. So the campaign to save Irvine Royal had been successful, and the small is beautiful argument, despite its cost to the ratepayers, had won the day. Councillor Tom Collier voiced the feelings of many in Irvine Newtown. The people of Irvine, when hearing of your recommendation, Chairman, will have seen that democracy in local government it does work, at least in Strathclyde. Thank you, Chairman. The principal reason for our deciding this was that uh, we wished Irvine to be seen to be treated in the same way as every other part of the region, and since the question of school closures will affect every other part of the region, or most other parts of the region, in one way or another, uh, within the next year or two, we wanted to consider further our strategy and the appropriate criteria to be applied to these issues, and we didn't want Irvine to be treated uh, differently. The other specific issue uh, that is relevant here is the fact that uh, the resultant sizes of the school roles, should Irvine Royal Academy be closed, would have been um, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500. The f people in Irvine felt very strongly that these roles were too great. Now, that's an arguable point, and I wouldn't, and the subcommittee wouldn't, uh, accept that that point was valid in the way that it was put. Nonetheless, uh, since we have, as a region, been building schools for an optimum target role over the last seven years of about 1,000 rather than 14, 1,500, in my view, that must imply an educational judgment that where you have a choice, um, a, a rule of a thousand uh, is preferable to aim for rather than a rule of thirteen, fourteen hundred. Born in the east and the world awaking, stirring to action, fresh and strong. Over the hills, the silence breaking, hard to the rousing battle song. I, your mother, the school that taught you, I am the singer, all attend. These are the words that I have taught you, the good cause triumphs in the end. Quick reaction. Was it happened months ago? <laughs>